Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 46. Now in the last few weeks we've started to look at how autograph can uh, help us teach differentiation and gradients and tangents and all that kind of stuff. So the natural progression from that of course is to look at how autograph can handle integration. And the good news is it can handle it very very well. So let's take a look. First thing we need is a brand new 2D graph page and if you notice from the top I'm in advanced mode. Now to look at areas underneath a curve, obviously first thing we need is a curve itself. So I'm going to do the classic y equals x squared. So click up there, enter equation, y equals xx for x squared. Now of course as we say every week it's important for the students to predict what the curve's going to look like, where it goes through the shape, all that kind of stuff. But we'll assume we're happy with that and we'll click OK. Now what I want Autograph to do first is to work me out the area underneath this curve, well between the curve and the x-axis, from 0, 0 to 1, 0. So first thing we're going to need to do is put in those points. Now you have a couple of options of popping in points in Autograph, but the best one for this is probably to select the curve itself so it goes black and then hit the coordinate tool. And you'll notice you don't get a choice between your y values here because this is going to fix the x coordinate to the curve itself. So I would like an x value of 0 please and that should give me 0, 0. And then also I'm going to hit coordinate and I'd like an x value of 1 and click OK. Now dead dead simple. Um, first I'm just going to click on an unoccupied part of the graph area to deselect everything. And to work out the area between those points underneath this curve I need to tell autograph the two points I want. So I'd like that point please. I'm in whiteboard mode so another click should give me that point as well. And if I right click then somewhere down here and it's right at the very bottom of the screen is find area. Now what's really really nice is when you introduce an integration and certainly when you're teaching the numerical methods of integration you've got all the big name options here now I think rectangles are a really nice one to start with rectangle minus so I'm going to click OK here and let's have a see what's going on now that's a bit tricky to see from uh, my view so let's use a bit of zoom in so a little click on that drag around and let's have a look at that much much better now we can see what autograph's done there it's taken uh, rectangles um, with bases I think of 0 0.2 there and it's used that as an estimate of the area. Now we can say to the students is that a good estimate? Is it an underestimate? An overestimate? How could we improve our estimate? And so on. And if we actually want to look at the current value you can see it's down here area 0.24 but that's a bit tricky to see. So if you give that a little double click then your status box comes up there, area 0.24. Now, it is a bit of a hassle if you had to keep going back in and changing the number of divisions, but if you just click on and just make sure just your area is selected, you notice you get a lovely little lightning bolt here. If I click that, then what we can do is dynamically change the number of divisions and ask the students to predict as we increase the divisions, what's going to happen to the estimate for the area? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going to get more realistic, less accurate, blah, blah, blah. So as we increase it, we'll see that the area is increasing increasing is it going to go in it go on indefinitely increasing is it going to reach a limit why is it going to reach a limit what limits are going to reach and so on so i think that's quite a nice way of doing it there i will just quickly show you that you can do a very similar thing if you want to do trapezium rule um, if i just select that area and give that a little delete again i'd like that point i'd like that point i'd like to right click and find area but this time i'll have trapezium rule please click OK and again we can talk about is that an overestimate or an underestimate and once again it's quite tricky to see from there but if you use the zoom in box and you just drag around one of these uh, points you'll notice that the trapezium's over the top so it's probably going to be an overestimate that and um, I'm just going to undo that to get back to my original view there I am there and likewise I can do the same thing again here select my um, trapeziums my little lightning bolt pops up and I can increase the number of divisions and see what happens there to the area and again it seems to be reaching some kind of limit maybe if I can't be bothered with all that click and I can just cut straight to the chase 200 and you get something that seems to be quite close to a third now um, wouldn't it be really really nice if we could rotate that area around the x-axis and start to look at volumes of revolution well we certainly can and that's coming next week and what I'll also do next week is show you how you can find the area not just under a curve but between a curve and a line but that's your little teaser to hook you in for uh, next week but I think we'll leave it there for now um, hope everything's all right take care bye bye